Good morning, ESD team. This coming 2020-2021 school year will be like no other in history. We have an opportunity to frame our current reality in ways that promote teamwork, innovation, and most importantly, learning environments for students that will help them to thrive. More than ever, we play an important role in the lives of our students to help them to continue to develop resiliency as we continue to develop that trait as well. In order to successfully achieve these marks of success, however, I believe that it is important for us to fully recognize and embrace the uncertainty and ambiguity that the COVID-19 pandemic has thrust upon us. I recently read an article entitled, Your Surge Capacity is Depleted, That's Why You Feel Awful, by Tara Haley, which was posted on the elemental.medium.com. I found this article very helpful personally and believe that much of the, what was in this article could be helpful to us as a system as well. This article uses the metaphor of a surge protector for electricity as a way to explain how our brains may be reacting to the uncertainty and constant change that the pandemic has brought into our lives. The term surge capacity was coined by researcher Ann Mastens, PhD, a psychologist and professor of child development at the University of Minnesota. She states that surge capacity is a collection of adaptive systems, mental and physical, that humans draw on the short-term survival in acute s stressful situations, such as natural disasters. But natural disasters occur over a short period, even if recovery is long. Pandemics are different. The disaster could stretch out for years. She goes on to say that the pandemic has demonstrated both what we can do with surge capacity and the limits of surge capacity. When it's depleted, it has to be renewed. But what happens when you struggle to renew it because the emergency phase has now become chronic? People can use their surge capacity for acute periods, but when dire circumstances drag on, Mastin says, you have to adopt a different way of coping. Another researcher, Dr. Pauline Boss, a family therapist and professor emeritus of social sciences at the University of Minnesota, suggests that we are experiencing ambiguous loss. She defines this as any loss that's unclear and lacks resolution. She also suggests that ambiguous loss elicits the same experiences and stages as grief. It's harder for high achievers, she said. The more accustomed you are to solving problems, to getting things done, to having a routine, the harder it will be on you because none of this is possible right now. You get feelings of hopelessness and helplessness, and those aren't good. She goes on to state that our culture is very solutions-oriented, which is a good way of thinking for many th things. But it is a very destructive way of thinking when you're faced with a problem that has no solution, or at least for a while. Finally, she adds, with our current pandemic, it is a loss of a way of life. It's the loss of our freedom to move about in our daily life as we are used to, and also the loss the of the overall educational experience we're used to, given school closures, modified openings, and virtual schoolings. These were all the things we are attached to and fond of, and they're gone right now, so the loss is ambiguous. It's not a death, but it's a major loss, says Boss. What we used to have has been taken away from us. Here in Ellensburg, our students and their families could be experiencing many of the same feelings of reaching their surge capacity and living in this state of ambiguous loss. For us, what could be some of the ways for us to manage ambiguous loss and replenish our own personal energy and be the conduit for developing resiliency in our students? Anne Haley in this article, Your Surge Capacity is Depleted, lists a few ways that could help us to accomplish this task and empower our students to, ve to develop resiliency and hope. These principles could include, first, accept that life is different right now. 
How do I challenge myself and my students to accept the daily circumstances that the pandemic creates, choose to acknowledge the difficulties, and at the same time identify the opportunities for growth? Two, have grace and compassion for yourself and others. How do I give myself and my students a break during these times of uncertainty and know that everyone is doing their very best under the circumstances that they are experiencing? Number three, recognize the different aspects of grief. Dr. Boss states that the familiar stages of grief don't actually occur in linear stages. She goes on to add that denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance are all major concepts in facing loss. For example, many people may be in denial, denying the virus is real or that the numbers of cases or deaths are as high as reported, or that masks really help reduce disease transmission. So, how do I keep this in mind when working with students? If students disengage with my lessons or if a parent lashes out in anger, could it be possible that they are experiencing one of these stages of grief? Would this approach help me to, be, to have more empathy for others? Number four, experience both and thinking. This is an alternative way of thinking to the either or that often we use. In her research, Dr. Boss states that this both end thinking during the pandemic, for example, could look like this pandemic is terrible and many people are dying. And this is also a time for families to come closer or on a more personal level, I'm highly competent and right now I'm flowing with the tide day to day. How could I help students to understand the both-and way of thinking, to help them manage the uncertainty that they are facing in their own lives? Number five, look for activities new and old that continue to fulfill you. How could I use this year to help my students identify what they are good at and give them opportunities to develop their strengths? Number six, Focus on maintaining and strengthening important relationships. How could I create opportunities virtually for students to collaborate, problem solve together, and experience connectivity within the times that I spend with them? And lastly, number seven, begin slowly to build your resiliency bank account. What do I choose to do that builds my sense of resiliency? How do I encourage students to pay attention to getting adequate sleep, nutrition, and exercise, as well as engage in activities that give them a sense of confidence in their ability to be successful. ESD team, we are ready for the challenge that will come our way this year. Although our instructional model may fluctuate throughout this year, if we stay connected to the principles outlined in this article, to assuming that everyone is doing their very best, and, and igniting our passions for serving students, we will have an exceptional year. Inev inevitably, this upcoming year will be marked with setbacks, here and there. But as we choose to learn from these setbacks, and press forward towards the finish line, we will succeed. Let's agree to not let the COVID-19 virus define who we are as a system. Our goal this year is that every child in ESD develops their own personal resiliency and experiences academic growth and a sense of connection and affirmation as a valued member of our ESD family. ESD, we've got this because we are ESD strong. <laughs>